What happens when you put a monster who eats cookies, an oversized bird, a garbage-loving grouch, and a green frog together in a room? Well, you end up with the finest children's television program in history. Sesame Street has been entertaining millions and millions of preschoolers for 50 years. It's a remarkable milestone, made even more impressive because while the kids are having fun watching fast-talking, cheeky Muppets, they're also learning. But it's not just their ABCs and 123s. Sesame Street has never been afraid to tackle controversial issues like race, divorce and death. And the good news is it's not about to stop anytime soon. OK. OK. okay. This is happening. Yeah. Let's do this hard-hitting oh. interview. Oh, the slate's out. Who needs <laughs> business? Snap this thingy. 60 minutes. Everybody ready? Yep. What is it? Tick, you tick, sure? Tick, 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 <laughs> OK, tick, here we go. Tick, tick. For so many of us, it was the theme tune to our childhood. Generations of children around the world grew up with Sesame Street. And it's here, at a studio in the back blocks of New York, that the 50th season is now being filmed. Here we go. In five, four, oh. three, two. I was trying to be quiet. Look at it. I forgot. Stepping onto this iconic set, it's not only a trip down memory lane. One new friend! Oh, oh, oh. It's full of revelations, too. We're glad you're here. Behind the scenes, one of the cameramen who filmed the program's first episode in 1969 is still on the tools. Oh, I'm so confused! When action is called, <laughs> puppeteers skate across the studio floor on roller stools. They use monitors to keep track of their Muppets as the scene plays out above their heads. And speaking of Muppets... Hi, welcome to Sesame Street. Hi, Liam. The gang's all here, hanging out on that famous stoop just as you'd expect. Well, it's almost overwhelming to be part of your neighbourhood. Really? Oh. Is that it seems like a normal day to us. Yeah. Nice and quiet, tape trolling. But there's nothing ordinary about today's filming schedule. You're, you're monsters. See? <laughs> yeah. Oh, but don't worry, we are friendly monsters. Oh, yes, a new are. character named Charlie is making her debut. Charlie, you've never seen a place like this. The eight-year-old, whose real name is Violet, is the first child cast member to join the show in 13 years. Hey, you go, Violet. Are you the luckiest girl in the world? Possibly. <laughs> There's a chance, isn't there? There's a chance. I mean, you come here to work with lovable monsters? Yeah. How good is that? It's awesome. Well, I, hope... I always loved Sesame Street and watching it, and I still do. It's not like anyone judges you. It's just they like you for you. I can't believe you guys have been friends for 50 years. Oh, I know, yeah. and I'm only six. And I'm four. How, how does the math work on that? We can't figure six, that one out. Mo monster years are different than people years. Yes, yeah, exactly. It must There's be. a weird conversion. I mean, Elmo, you don't look a day over five. Well, well almost three and a half. Are you saying you're almost old? Oh. <laughs> Rubber ducky, you're the one. You make bath time lots of fun. The fact that Sesame Street is still just as popular with children today as it was 50 years ago, shocks no one more than its co-founder, Lloyd Morissette. We had far greater success than we ever imagined. When we started the experiment, we didn't know that we would have a second season. We didn't know whether we could teach anything. What few realise is that the show began as a bold experiment, when Lloyd, a researcher in early education, teamed up with TV producer Joan Gans Cooney. One night, we were having dinner at Joan's apartment. Talk naturally got around to television over the course of the evening. And at one point, I said, Joan, do you think television could be used to teach young children? And, and she said, well, I don't know, but I'd like to talk about it. That was the way it started. 
That was the dinner party that changed children's TV forever. Yes. Right from the beginning, Sesame Street broke all the rules, dishing up education disguised as entertainment. It pushed the boundaries with an interracial cast, a move that even got the show banned at first in Mississippi. But the decision was strategic. I may be small. I may be small. But I am. But I am. Somebody. Somebody. For the first time, children were seeing themselves on TV in a way they never had before. The grungy urban set was no mistake either. Lloyd wanted the show to target preschoolers from low-income families who were falling behind in their ABCs and 123s. Fishy, fishy, fishy! One, one fish? Wow! Then there were the Muppets. Hilarious and enchanting, they were the brainchild of the equally eccentric Jim Henson. The puppeteer would go on to achieve world fame. But in the early days of Sesame Street, he too was considered an experiment. We didn't know what he was. We didn't know anything about the Muppets. Getting a person who had a good track record, who was well respected and looked at as a creative individual. What a fateful decision that was. It was indeed. Yeah, I'm, hey, I'm you looking at you. Hang out on this stoop oh. all day. Oh, you want to take your party someplace oh. else, huh? Oh. <laughs> Oscar. Oh, Oscar, 50 years and you're still grumpy. Yeah. Don't you want to change? Don't you want to be happy? No, no, I years? think this is a great record. I'm going for another 50. <laughs> and you're really helping by coming here. <laughs> yeah. 50 years later, Jim Henson's legacy lives on at the Creature Shop in New York. It's here, inside this factory of secrets, that new characters are born. Our fat blue character, which is one of our favorite shapes. Because and who better to show us the craft of Muppet magic than 30-year veteran Jason Weber? OK, so once you pick the body, how do you build a Muppet? You will usually start with the, the nose and the eyes. Those are the things that, you know, the eyes are the pathway to the soul, of course. And we have this drawer that is filled with all kinds of sizes, colors, um, and attitudes. Dozens of different choices. There, there are all kinds of choices. Why, why do some of the eyes have eyelashes attached and others don't? Well, that's how you tell the gender of a puppet. <laughs> oh, really? The females have eyelashes, and the males have just a straight line. Well, I've just discovered how to sex a muppet. See? Well, you learn something every day. <laughs> Indeed. I always thought you looked up their arm. As impressive as the product final product that. is... We want to give the puppeteers as much to work with as we possibly can. The creatures are only fluff and feathers without the talented puppeteers who work their magic on set. It's up to us to make the character really live and really work and breathe, I mean, literally breathe. Marty Robinson pulls the strings of some of Sesame Street's most lovable Muppets. For 38 years, the veteran puppeteer has been bringing Telemonster, Snuffleupagus and Slimy the Worm to life. When I put on a puppet, there's a, there's a funny thing that happens. Who is this? Uh, hello, my name is Parker. Uh, uh, do you have a name? <laughs> yes, I do. I noticed there is uh, no one working you from below or behind, so you must be one of those, uh, what do you call it, um, humans? Be surprised who's pulling the strings. <laughs> yeah. no, but but, but here, here, here's, here's the trick. Now, right now, I'm doing you know, some, some basic puppet technique. Uh, you know, I've got lip sync, you know, he's focusing on you. He's not looking at you, those aren't real. You know, it's, it's an illusion, but... If, if, if I'm doing my job well enough and I make the illusion strong enough that Parker here is, you know, is, you know, a living, breathing little creature that's worthy of your attention, then you're emotionally invested in it. And once you are personally and emotionally invested in the life of Parker here, you want him to succeed, even though you know he's just an object. Who goes there? You like it. An audience of children isn't only responsible for the success of Sesame Street. Ah, 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 is very important. 
ah, ah, ah. Grown-ups, too, have always loved tuning in. With the show's many pop culture references... ...upside down to Navy. ...and celebrity cameos keeping parents entertained. Do you know my name? Oh, oh, I cannot believe it! But as frivolous as some of the content may seem, all of it is based on rigorous research. At Sesame Workshop, the not-for-profit creator of the program, writers work closely with child psychologists and educators to tackle issues that affect vulnerable children across 160 countries. Elmo thinks Whoopi's skin is a very pretty brown. Over the years, life lessons about race... We all know you can't get HIV just by touching someone or by... HIV, divorce, natural disasters... High five, Julia. <laughs> <laughs> and even huh? autism high have five? been hugely yeah. impactful. She may not do what you expect, like give you a high five. Yeah, she does things just a little differently, in a Julia sort of way. <laughs> oh. I think the show sets out now to serve the whole child and to move beyond um, sort of reading, writing, and arithmetic to being smarter and stronger and kinder, so it's about being a better human being. Who, who is it that's teaching them? Executive producer Brown Johnson says one of the most memorable moments in Sesame Street's history was an episode that discussed death. Big Bird, uh, don't you remember we told you? Uh, Mr. Hooper died. When the actor who played shopkeeper, Mr. Hooper, passed away unexpectedly, it presented a sad but important teaching opportunity in explaining death to children. Experiencing Mr. Hooper's death on the show was so poignant. It covered a really hard topic from a very childlike point of view. Big Bird, when, when people die, they don't come back. Ever? No, never. That was a fascinating way to treat the death of a cast member to make that a first for yeah, the program. I, I agree, but that's so sesame, right? To take reality and make it part of the narrative. And perhaps that's part of the reason why Sesame Street has notched up half a century on air. Boing, 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 boing. As television's longest running children's show, it's forever changing, while somehow managing to stay the same. The secret is that we had a, a show that, that worked for a lot of people. There are legions of children who watched it and enjoyed it, and they're still using it for their children. So I think that that's, that's a success. In your quieter moments, you must be incredibly proud. I'm proud that I think we still have a future. But uh, pride goes before a fall, as you know. <laughs> Why do you think you've remained friends, you guys, for that long? What, what makes it work? We're all different, and so we learn and grow from each other, you know what I mean? That's true. Yeah, like, we're glad you're here. You're talking about Australia. Uh, like, I love you. You like Australia, huh? I love it. Yeah? Hey, I got a great idea. <laughs> Why don't you pack up and go Australia. there? You can take them. <laughs> oh, you're horrible. Oh, you are horrible. Out of here. <laughs> you are. Bye, we love you. See ya. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. Jeez, it's easier to interview Trump, I think. We're not going to touch that Watch one. No, I'm not going to touch that Watch one. Watch <laughs> Hello, I'm Liam Bartlett. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.